a completely new car brand, a hidden Volvo on the inside, but for a way cheaper price. And they don't even want you to buy the vehicle. What's going on here? This is the Link & Co. 01. And we're going to find out what's it all about. Let's go. This is the Link & Co. logo. And sorry, I got to start with a small rant about the name Link & Co. for an automotive brand. I mean, ever heard of Alfa & Romeo, Mercedes & Benz, Mac & Laren? <laughs> no, you don't call it that way, at least in the automotive world. But maybe that was the approach to have something unique. However, if I don't like the name, it doesn't tell anything about the quality of the car because that is super interesting. This is the Lincoln Co. 01 and in the front you can see a unique design here with this dot structure, LED headlamps from standard and also an interesting vertical daytime running light. So it does not look like a Volvo XC40 at all, but it uses the same Volvo XC40 platform. So Lincoln Co. owned by the Chinese Geely Corporation, which also bought Volvo a couple of years ago and that's why they also use this very same platform. However, it's about three and a half centimeters or one and a half inches longer in wheelbase than the Volvo XC40, also a little bit longer overall, four meters 54 or 179 inches. So really looking to find out what that does for the interior. 20 inch wheels we have here for today with a blue accentuation. This is for the plug-in hybrid model or 18 inch wheels then for the inbuilt hybrid model. Soon about the engines. Really interesting that it has a compact SUV size and they indeed, they offer the car for purchase, yes, but actually they rather want you not to buy it completely, but to have a subscription model for 500 euros in Europe per month, but that does include everything. So insurance, taxes and so on. Volvo does offer that by so-called Care by Volvo, but that's 600 euros then for an XC40 in comparison. And if you think about it, everything is included besides fuel, that's still a very attractive price. And if you purchase it, it's at least seven eight thousand euros cheaper than the xc40 in the uh, you know in the respective version and the cool thing here about this vehicle it's always like it is here just blue or black exterior and interior color that's everything you can pick everything else is just kind of full spec already and that's a very interesting approach here in the rear we see again the big lettering for the logo right here and the modern design for the tail lamps so we see a modern car design and an even more modern approach of selling a vehicle. And I think this really could be the future because there's no hassle in buying whatsoever. You just pay one fee per month and that's basically it. Under the hood, in both cases, 1.5 liter turbo petrol engine, three cylinder, either as an inbuilt hybrid, around 200 horsepower, not available for the Volvo XC40 or with a plug-in hybrid that is somewhat similar to the PHEV drivetrain in the Volvo XC40, then with 260 horsepower for the total system output. So again, both front-wheel drive. And the interesting, interesting thing is here that the battery for the plug-in hybrid model, you can see here, 14 kilowatt hours net capacity, and that means a pure electric range of about 60 kilometers, 35 miles, and that is more than in the Volvo XC40, about 50% more. So once again, you get higher range, a little bit bigger vehicle, but a lower price than the Volvo. That's the secret. And here we have the plug-in hybrid model. Here on the driver's side, there's the flap. You have to release it from the inside and then you can have 3.6 kilowatt AC charging. It's not too fast, but considering you know, it's a plug-in hybrid, so you just leave it overnight at home or something, then it's also full. This is the car key. You can see here in form of the logo, really unique. And then Really speaking, Volvo, these door handles, door closing sound, pretty solid. Interior materials, also interesting here with the structure right there. And also these structures here we know from the Volvos, soft materials. The interior is almost animal free, besides of the steering wheel and something of the shifting knob. The seats are all fabric and even from recycled materials, Econul they call it. And when you pick the exterior blue color, then you also have it here on the interior. So a nice accentuation, really cool, sporty styling, integrated head restraint. If you want it more subtle, then you can also go for the black color scheme, exterior, interior. And getting inside, indeed when you sit down here, well on the lower area they are a little bit stiff the seats, but feel quite sporty, but you have the nice upright seating position, so overall comfortable seating. and. 
Yeah, somehow when I close my eyes, I have the feeling I'm in a Volvo XC40. Indeed, steering wheel also control, easy in and out, up and down, smooth process. And it's a really high interior build quality. And it's hardly that we see new car brands that come to the market and immediately have a good build quality. And that's again where they profit from the whole Volvo thing. One meters 86 or six foot one, my height, yes. Not shrinking yet. Here, yeah, that leaves still some headroom. And in the middle part, we also have the panoramic roof. Again, once again, it is all standard with this vehicle. So there are no choices in the configurator. And that's also making car buying really easier. I think it's a very cool approach because when you got everything in it, there's nothing left to wish for. And this leaves a lot of light on the interior and you can also open it like this, especially on a beautiful day. Interior over here, once again with the honeycomb structure right here. Also soft touch materials right there. So again, good build quality. 12.3 inch digital instruments on the left. 12.7 inch big screen on the right side. Zoom or deals to the screens. Here on the steering wheel, you have these buttons and they also give you a feedback, but it's actually just one button, but separated in uh, you know, different units. You could also have voice input. Also zoom out to that here, the the climate control is still manual like that and also switches here from the ring or ambient light around that. And then you have an inductive charging mat, automatic shifting lever right here. So everything easy and straightforward. You can pick different driving modes. And then here is still a manual volume knob, cup holders, adaptive, everything you need basically. And then some more space underneath right here and also smartphone USB-C or USB-A connection. Digital instruments, easy and clear to read. You cannot set up that much in these, but you also don't have to. At the moment there is an assistance systems view. But the interesting thing is that as soon as I start a route guidance, the whole system changes. And then you also have the GPS view here in your line of sight. And this is the main system here. See here, the map could be a little bit more responsive as for the CPU power, but it has a very nice overview actually. And the interesting thing is it has an Android based system, but they do not use all of the Google services. And that's a little bit weird, I think. They do have the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto integration. So I think that's cool that you still have the choice to do so. And you can always go back here to the Lincoln Co main system. But for example, the voice recognition is by, hey Frank. I'm listening. Drive me to Frankfurt. Do you want to go to Frankfurt? Frankfurt, now starting navigation. And now my question is, why can you say, hey Frank, and then a female voice is answering? Hmm, doesn't make too much sense to me. Yeah, Frank is here still. Uh, but and why don't they just use the Google um, Assistant for that one? That would have been better. And also the whole Google Maps system. So really weird mix. But overall, I think it's a very interesting infotainment system and you still have a nice overview of what you're doing. Oh, by the way, here the um, uh, Colab function is interesting. Here you can record and share an idea, for example. Hey guys, why don't you just switch the voice assistant to the Google Assistant? I mean, you have got the technology, you also use it in the Polestar 2 and in the Volvo XC40 All Electric. So why don't you just use it here, guys? So now the engineers got my message, I'll send it and probably they rethink it. Now the rear seats, beautiful detail here at the back part of the front seats with the blue fabric. Really like that one. And now the interesting thing is, what about the legroom? Because I told you the wheelbase is a little bit longer than in the Volvo XC40. And indeed, I mean, it's not a long vehicle, but you have sufficient legroom, not only sufficient, really like superb legroom. That's really cool. Headroom is also just fine. So for four tall adults, it's actually no problem. Upright seating position, you're also in the rear. And then if you move further, isofix on the outside, then you have cup holders right here. They are also somewhat adaptive. And then in the middle part, oh, making everything tidy here once again. <laughs> so here there's USB-C charging and USB-A charging. And it needs comfortable both on the outside seats and you can also use the middle seat. Actually also works. So indeed this car is somewhat five adult proof and you do fold the seats already from here. And you know, some more storage at the back part of the seat. And once again, this is even just an early prototype, one of the first vehicles that people are actually allowed to drive here in, in Germany and also in over, over Europe. And for that, 
we didn't find any serious quality flaws yet. That's really astonishing. That was a bad omen. Just found one here. The folding mechanism here of the seats. This feels a little bit loose, but yeah, I mean, I really had to search for something. What about the trunk? 466 liters. Yes, you guessed it right. Once again, more than in the Volvo XC40. And here the length is 35 inches or almost 90 centimeters. And the width is also a good meter or 40 inches. And the height here to the cover, we have about 19 inches or you know, a little bit less than 50 centimeters. So that's also a good result. And when we get out the luggage, you can see I also fold one of the Seats there, one third, two thirds split. This is then here a rubber mat to protect. You can also remove that. And underneath here, you have some more space, for example, also then for the charging cables. Welcome to Thomas's driving lounge with the Lincoln Co. Zero One. Turning indicator sounds a little bit weird, but everything else, I mean, once again, I close my eyes. Oh, just for a brief second, <laughs> so we have an accident. Indeed, it feels like a Volvo XC40. So, and that immediately makes a quality impression of the vehicle. We do have 20 inch wheels mounted here in the plug-in hybrid version. And still, the suspension is not uncomfortable. And that really speaks for suspension. Steering is really soft, easy to control has no real dead zone area, needs some steering words, so it's not the most progressive one, but overall likable. Seating position upright, you feel already as you would be in a grown-up SUV, and together with the nice and comfortable fabric seats, it's actually a very good first driving impression. Being in the plug-in hybrid means, at the moment we're driving all electric, we have hybrid driving mode, then the car decides for itself what it's going to do, and that's actually totally fine. You're However, can also change the driving mode to pure, then you're even more ensure that you're staying in the electric mode, or you can go to power, and then also the combustion engine is being activated and you have the greatest power of all. <laughs> the greatest power, of course, then you have you know, with this drivetrain. So if you want to do some acceleration maneuvers on the motorway, for example. However, being in the city, we can also once again go back to the pure mode and then also the combustion engine shuts off. As for recuperation or regenerative braking, when I lift the throttle, nothing happens. However, I can also pull back the shifting lever and then we are in the B mode and now there's more recuperation happening, happening. And when you use the normal brake pedal, you even get more recuperation until more braking power is needed and then the real brakes are being applied. Usually I would put it then to the B mode here, so you always have some recuperation when you lift the throttle. That's also really handy when it comes to city driving. Noise insulation so far at lower speeds is really good. It makes a very silent atmosphere and it also speaks for the plug-in hybrid drive here. And once again, for a small plug-in hybrid, there is a substantial pure electric range. That's also really good and as I told you initially, at a really decent price, 35,000 euros for the inbuilt hybrid. It's a German purchase price, 42,000 euros for the plug-in hybrid vehicle. And that is seven to 8,000 euros less expensive than the Volvo XC40, while having more equipment in it, while having a bigger battery, while having more legroom in the rear. So that's, you know, that's really speaking for the vehicle. So just looking at the facts, you really have to say this is one of the best price performance offerings on the market now, both for a plug-in hybrid and, um, uh, and an inbuilt hybrid at the moment. And they're not positioning it in the premium segment on the one hand, because they still want people to buy Volvos and pay more money. Yet at the same time, if you look at everything we present to you, it does rather present itself in a premium-ish position if you compare it to non-premium brands. Now, acceleration here from the traffic light in the corner. Yeah, pure electric, so actually quite nice. From a drive only for this vehicle in both versions, but that's actually totally fine, totally enough. Lane change here, 50 kilometers an hour. Suspension doesn't shake up too much at all, so it's rather a sporty setup, especially here with 20 inch wheels. But even if I go to the sewage covers here, there's nothing coming to you know, to the, to, 
to back pain or something. So overall, I really like the suspension setup. And they offer this car here to be also for you know a city sh car sharing vehicle. Of course, in Corona times, car sharing has become, let's say, less popular, <laughs> but it still might be something for the future if we can get rid of the virus, you know, in at, at some point. And we can also do a power acceleration now from the traffic lights. So now we have both drivetrains, combustion engine and electric drive. Yay, that's 50. So you see here, enough power we have. Eight seconds is the acceleration figure to one kilometers or 62 miles an hour with the plug-in hybrid. And it's nine seconds with the inbuilt hybrid. So that's the basic difference. And I mean, the three cylinder sound is actually not too bad. So the three cylinders always have very unique sound, but of course the biggest advantage you still have here when you're driving pure electric, because then you can definitely enjoy this silence of the drivetrain. That's to me always the most likable thing. Yeah, I'm really feeling at home here in the city traffic because I think it has the right size for a vehicle, I would say. It's not too big. You could always have enough space on the interior. So I think really a good compromise as for a car size and I really enjoy driving it here. A lot of fun and to me one of the most interesting experiences for today is, I mean, it's a completely new car brand, but it doesn't feel that un unfamiliar. And of course, one of the main reasons is, you know, this, uh, this, you know, this Volvo corporation or that they use the same platform. So it feels kind of Volvo-ish. That's really contributing, uh, contributing to it. But it's also a thing that most of the things are really straightforward as for the user interface and so on. Yeah, I think they should have gone Google all the way like they did with the Polestar 2 and the Volvo XC40 all electric with the infotainment system because the voice assistant is better done by Google definitely and also the maps is better done with Google. So I think that's probably the only fail about this vehicle. I mean, theoretically, they could still change it later on here with the software. Everything else, you really have to say for a long time or a couple of times and repeatedly, the Chinese manufacturers themselves have to you know, have tried to invade the European market and was never successful yet. I'm promising you this time it will be. And now to our conclusion for today with the Lincoln Co. Zero One. I think exterior-wise, a really fresh and modern design works very well. Once again here with the daytime running lights. And I think the blue accentuations, of course, if you can choose between black and blue, go for the blue one. Yes, and then you also have the blue accentuations on the interior. The interior also with a high build quality. We definitely see the knowledge input by Volvo right there. Also cool that we always have animal-free seats and also breathable fabric materials. And also infotainment wise, hardly anything we can criticize. So it's a very good package and also enough space on the inside. And due to this platform sharing, it really drives like a Volvo XC40. So you also have a sophisticated driving feeling. Well, and then at the end of the day, 100 euros less per month if you take this subscription model or then, you know, you also add some equipment in the Volvo XC40, like seven, eight, ten thousand euros or dollars less expensive than the Volvo XC40, then it really becomes a no brainer. So, this is also one of the reasons why GD back in the day bought Volvo, that they can also profit from the brand, from the knowledge from the brand, from the Swedish brand, and put it also on their own, you know, proprietary vehicles. So, this is really, you know, like a Chinese Volvo hybrid thing, definitely. And I can just say it really works and is a very attractive deal here on the market. And the whole concept of you don't have to do a registration, get insurance and so on separately, but just pay one price and you get the car same week delivery to your doorstep. That's just a modern concept of how you sell vehicles, you know, so you just fuel it up and that's basically it. Of course, on the long run should also be offered as a full electric. In the Lincoln Co. lineup, there are also full electric vehicles already sold in China. They are also globally rolling out the brand. Europe now is their next step here. So a very interesting concept, very interesting brand. Yeah, I still think that the brand name is a little bit weird, but definitely 
The car is not weird at all. It's really very promising. What do you think? Tell me your comments here about this vehicle and also about the new brand. And subscribe if you haven't done so far and leave us also a thumbs up. Thank you so much. See you next time.